high-speed communications is a thing of the present. Approximately six and a half years ago, Tab Group wrote a report called The Value of a Millisecond. It seems like ages from where we are today. I'm joined by Sean Malamed from Strike Technology to talk about microwave communications, sort of the new paradigm shift in high-speed communications. Sean, thank you very much for joining me. Pleasure. Sean, let's talk about microwave. What is it? Is it actually being used today in communications? Sure. So microwaves technologies have been around for quite some time, actually, and evolved over the years from pager networks to wireless phones that we use every day. Um, and recently, the radio technology latency has dropped significantly because of uh, the improvements in the wireless mm -hmm. world. And um, that actually created the opportunity of transmitting signals and information between different locations, for example, Chicago to New Jersey, in a much faster way than just fiber. I mean, a few years ago, we had some major investments in improving the path from Chicago to New York. Right. I believe the benchmark was at the time around 13.5, 13.6. That's right. been improved slightly. What is the benchmark now for sort of microwave communications from Chicago to New York? So you're looking at the range between 8 to 9 milliseconds um, in terms of once you move to, to, my, to microwave, you're actually transmitting the signal through the air. So you're mm -hmm. transmitting it as the closest as possible to the line of sight you can get from the two points through the curvature of the Earth. Right. So um, the relay of that signal going through the air is going much faster. It's going almost at, at the speed of light in vacuum. Right. Versus when you transmit the, um, the light through fiber, you get a delay of about 40% versus transmitting it through the air. Which is uh, almost a, almost a, it, it's very close to the actual speed of light, the actual transmission. But we do know with, with microwave, having done some research in this, there is some latency added every time you have to hop from tower to tower because microwave only has a set distance it can actually transmit data. Is that correct? That, that's correct. So, so once you try to transmit 730 miles to get from New Jersey to Chicago, you actually have to go through different towers along the way to regenerate the signal. And to error correct along. Is, is error correction done along the way or is it actually done at the, at, at the beginning of the end or is it done throughout the, the, the Actually, course? you do both. So okay. you do error correction in a very problematic links mm -hmm. where the signal is not passing as uh, cleanly as you'd like it. And then you keep a parity bit along the way to make sure that the integrity of the information at the end is, is being completed. So what is, the, what is the approximate delta between the fastest right now sort of fiber link between Chicago and New York and the fastest microwave link? Was it, is, it's about two or three milliseconds of yeah, one if millisecond? If you're looking from a one-way direction, mm -hmm. you're looking at about 6.5 compared to 4.1, 4.2 milliseconds. Oh, so it's that significant. Yes, this is. Now, we, we have heard a lot of people sort of looking at microwave and say this is interesting, but they've, they've sort of shied away from it because if they, they're not sure it's here. Is our folks actually using microwave communications in today's market to sort of gain an advantage between the Chicago and New York marketplaces? Sure, I mean, if, if you do lead lag analysis between ES and SPY, right, you want to look at the future and the underlying equities and you see the delta when a price change in the lead, in this case the future, and mm -hmm. when you change the cash, you can see within the last 12 months the shift from the fastest timing that was 6.5, right, we're looking at the spread network for example, as it goes closer and closer to 4, which is uh, the introduction of microwave networks. So every microwave network is being introduced, you can actually see people trade on this and hence the arbitrage between those two products. Frank. Who are the, uh, the, what is sort of the, the sort of makeup of the firms that are actually using it now? Are we seeing sort of large investment banks and market makers or are we still talking about sort of the leaders of, of, of HFT sort of investing in this technology now? So I, I think you see a diverse group of, of, of people, anything that range from, of course, the HFT type of firms, uh, buy side, as well as the large banks that uh, offer this product to some of their customers. Mm -hmm as well as some of the exchanges. We've seen some filing recently of exchanges that offer radio frequency based fees to their customers. Within these high speed trading outfits, one of the big things is determinancy and the ability to trade at a very deterministic level. Does microwave offer you that determinancy? Do you have a sort of a set communications sort of regimen that says, I know at any given time mm -hmm. it's going to be X and it's always going to stay at X? Yeah, so in terms of latency, it's very predictable. Mm -hmm. the, the challenge when you look at RF uh, or microwave-based communication is really the narrow bandwidth, which you cannot transmit you know, more than 150 meg per channel. Very limited, very limited. Very limited. Right. 
Um, and the other aspect is it is susceptible to some weather conditions and high winds and twists and, and sways of, of towers that relay the signals. So um, the, the question becomes, how do you actually incorporate that into your design when you design the path to keep the dins distances much shorter mm -hmm. so you can actually compensate for any kind of weather conditions, as well as from an integration as, at the end point, from a, if you're integrating a market data feed uh, based on microwave, how do you actually look and, and find those problems and still use a fiber link to make sure you get the comprehensive data as a backup? Right. In today's marketplace, you know, people measure sort of consistently at the five nines. So with, with, with fiber, you've got sort of a five nine, 99.59 um, consistency. So I know I can trade almost the vast majority of times that right. I know my infrastructure is going to be stable. It sounds like with microwave, you may not have that, that, that very end of the spectrum to trade in. Is that, is that accurate? Well, that's pretty accurate in terms of you probably get closer to three nines. Mm -hmm. uh, depends on the Three path. nines, you sure, not, not two or one nine? Uh, you get 99.7 you know, or 99.9% okay. availability. And that, that gives you, you know, yeah, a fraction of percent that you're not uh, getting the information, right, right or the, the network might be down. Uh, and hopefully within that 1%, you learn to avoid the market. So the, the key is going to be, if you're looking to, to migrate over microwaves, to understand its, its limitations and to build that into the underlying infrastructure. So that when, when you hit that sort of terminus, you know to get out of the market that you shut down your operations until things can come back to to a, yeah. to a range that is that is manageable in a very similar manner to the way people to do today arbitrate between feed A and feed B for the same market mm -hmm. data, or you know Nasdaq has the ultra FPGA feed and they don't have a backup for it, so you consume an FPGA feed and you consume a regular itch feed on the other hand and arbitrate between the two. Do you see and and, and maybe this is an unfair question since you're a microwave technology guy, but I mean, what is the lifespan of microwave? Is there going to be a new technology? A few years ago, everyone was saying, you know what, the 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 the, the, uh, the fiber link between Chicago and New York—that's it. Now people are starting to think, well, we got microwave that sort of eliminates the millisecond. Are there other technologies out there that may supplant microwave? There's, I guess, uh, what we call hollow core uh, fiber. Yeah. So, so theoretically. You know, in order to transmit speed of light in the speed of light, you can actually get from Chicago to New Jersey or Aurora to Carter, in this mm -hmm. case, to around 7.9 uh, milliseconds. The the question becomes, how can you actually get this line of sight and pass right. the signal without being it being delayed by error medium, which introduce some latency, right. or or worse, a regular fiber. So uh, theoretically, you can transmit it through a hollow core fiber where there is no mat material. Right. Um, so you have a vacuum, in in, uh, it's surrounded by fiber, and you're actually transmitting through the vacuum right. in the hollow core. It's a very slight advantage over a microwave. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about 0.003. Um, but, and you can manufacture those strands longer than a few meters <laughs> at the time. So it's pretty far out there. But so if I'm transmitting from you to me, we're fine. Otherwise, we're, we're not there yet. Yeah, we're not there yet. Well, Sean, I want to thank you very much for coming and talking to us about microwave technology. It is a technology that a lot of folks are talking about. It's definitely here today. And I think you're going to see more folks start investing in this technology as we start seeing it actually, you know, more paths open up. So, Sean, thank you very much. Thank you very much.